Luke 16, 19 through 31, we read about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. This parable is unique to Luke and is the only parable to have a character's name. We have one man who is wealthy, dressed to the nines, enjoying a buffet of food every day, living the good life. Then we have Lazarus, a man with literally nothing. He lays at the rich man's gate, hoping, begging for food, a body full of sores, and even the dogs lick them. Gross. He was ceremonially unclean, in more ways than one. The rich man apparently had it all, and Lazarus literally had nothing. His life was terrible. Then it happens. Death. The reality we all face at one point or another. Then the rich man dies and is buried and ends up in hell. Eternal torment. Lazarus dies and is welcomed into divine favor, sitting with Abraham. Lazarus is in a place of blessing. The rich man, a place of torment. Everything switched. So what is Jesus trying to say here? There are points to talk about regarding life after death, but I want to focus on life before death. What does it mean to really live? The rich man thought his security rested in his wealth and resources. By worldly, worldly standards, he lived a, a blessed life, only to find out upon death that it had no eternal value. What good will it be if you gain the whole world, yet forfeit your soul? And that's exactly what happened. Our challenge here that I feel like God is calling us to be generous with our resources, to share the wealth that has been given to us, to build his kingdom, to make an eternal impact. Don't be selfish. And also on how we are to respond to people like Lazarus. I'm sure the rich man thought Lazarus was, was cursed by God. In my opinion, a life without love, without compassion is meaningless. We can have everything in this world, but without love, we have nothing. We need to engage the world, the broken, the hurt, the destitute, with the love of God. We are his ambassadors. I think that it's our responsibility. If God is gracious to the needy and to the broken, hint, we're all needy and broken. We also need to reflect his grace, love, and care to the world and all that we say and do. We are to be merciful as he is merciful. We've been given so much. How are, are we using all that we have to build God's kingdom? If we find it difficult to help those in need, this parable gives us a, a good heart check on, on how we view not only our own lives, but the lives of others. I think the text really challenges us to ask, you know, what am I doing with my life? Am I really living all for Jesus? Let's be a community that engages our broken world with the love of God. Let's be his ambassadors, all for Jesus.